Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host, UK Kachidori. Hi, and welcome back to your Kai Business Show. Today, if you are one great business owner, you know or you face one of the tremendous fears that can potentially stop you from doing what you want to do. It may be the fear of unknown or the fear of failure or any other fear. Today, my guest is an expert when it comes to breaking through fears and achieving your goal, and that is Linda West. Linda, thank you so much for joining us here on the show. Thank you. I'm pleased to be here. Thanks for having me. Incredible. Now, Linda West is regarded by so many people as the opera of San Diego. She is the master connector, the best-selling author of The Year of Fears, an editor and a contributor of the Life by Design magazine. In fact, Linda has done so well to an extent that she has done over 2,300 Facebook Live videos to date. In fact, she will continue doing this because according to some well-known, in fact, I'll let uh, Linda tell you about that in a moment. Linda, uh, fill in the gaps where I've missed out on the introductions here. Okay, well, first, thank you so much for having me. I'm really pleased to be here. And, you know, you're, we're talking about fear today, which is one of my favorite topics. And, and I'll share with you why the year of fears, my book right there, the yeah. year of fears, how that came about. Um, so I actually grew up in a very abusive alcoholic household. Right. And what I discovered much later in life is that that pinned me down and it prevented me from wanting to do a lot of things because I had a lot of fear in the household. And so those fearful feelings that I experienced when I was a child, I carried those into my adult life. I ended up marrying somebody just like my dad who on a daily basis told me I was stupid and ignorant, and that people were only kind to me because they felt sorry for me. So that might not sound so bad, but it is bad because what happened is my mind believed it. I believed that I was stupid. And because I believed that I was stupid, I never wanted to speak to people because what if I say something that's going to be stupid and they're not going to like me? So I had this fear. What was my fear? My fear was of judgment, which many of us have the fear of judgment. Indeed. So we will fast forward when I was 51 years old after working 49 different jobs. <laughs> yes, 49 different jobs. I realized that my life was not fulfilled and I was here doing nothing, nothing important. And so I had this epiphany that I need to figure out why I was placed here on this earth. Why am I here? And I hired a life coach. Beautiful. And in five months time from the first moment I hired that life coach to five months later, I realized that I needed to quit my job. And so I did. Now, many people listening today have done the same thing, quitting their job without a net, which is what I did. Many have you know, left their job after saving to make sure that they had you know, something going before they leaped. I didn't. I just leaped because I actually was called I had a calling while I was driving to work one day. And that calling was that you are here for something bigger. You need to leave your job. And so I did. It was scary, but I did it. I took that leap of faith. Came home. I told my husband, I'm quitting my job and we're going to sell our house. Wow. And he was like, what? I get the quitting job thing because you've had 49 jobs. That's no big deal, you know? Yes. But I don't want to sell the house. I don't want to sell the house. And I said, you don't get it. I was told and called to do something bigger and better. So no human body can get in the way of that. And so I need to quit the job and we need to sell the house so that I can make it happen. Fortunately, he said, awesome. You do it, make the best of it. I know you are amazing. And I know that you can do so much for this world. So He's make it happen. <laughs> Truly. What a switch from my first husband. And right, huge difference where somebody was constantly telling me I was stupid, but I have this person saying, You're amazing, you can do this. Oh. So, having that support, you know, was incredible. So, that was November of 2014 when I quit that job to embark yeah. on. I had no idea what, I had no idea where I was going, what I was going to do. I just knew 
that I wasn't going to live that life anymore. That's all I knew. And you had the faith. So January 1st, do you have faith? Yes, like, like blind faith, right? Literally, totally blind. <laughs> I didn't know what an entrepreneur was. I never even heard the word before. You know, I lived in, I worked in corporate for so long. So many jobs working for people, you know. So it was January 1st of 2015. Yes. I woke up that morning and I said, I need to do something different this year. What is it going to be? Well, for the previous six months, I had had this life coach. She helped me see that I'm a valuable person. I have a lot to offer the world. And I said, but I'm scared to do so many things. So you know what? I'm going to face a fear every single day this year. And I woke up and I said, I'm going to face a fear. What's my first fear? And so whatever fear popped into my head every morning in 2015, whatever the first fear was that popped in, that was the fear I faced. Wow. I had no idea what that meant, what it was going to do for me. All I knew is I was a scared person. I had a lot of fears and I needed to start facing them and figure out if this will help me become a bigger person, a better person. And I got to tell you, it really has. It has given me confidence that I didn't even know existed. Incredible. I never understood why, you know, movie stars or politicians, all these, you know, Martin Luther King, like these people leading these marches and these important people in our lives, these people that we really look up to, I never understood how they could be them and I could be me. We're all human. Yes. Well, there were fears that were stopping me from understanding what it was to be big, what it was to make a difference. And facing those fears helped me to see that I am big too, that I too can make a difference. Even though I'm this little person, one little person, I can make a difference. And so those facing those fears, that's really one of the biggest things that it gave me that year. Incredible. You know, uh, talking about that, not too long ago, you were interviewing the stars on the red carpet. Talk to us about that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was crazy because, you know, I never imagined it. Like, it was never a thought in my mind that I was ever going to be on the red carpet, whether it was standing on the red carpet as a star or interviewing people on the red carpet. It never entered my mind. But, so, I'll, you know, quickly, like, in 2015 – when I started that journey, there was something that happened that year that really propelled me onto this path, again, right. that I didn't know what was going to happen. But what happened was I attended a vision board event, and it was in January of 2015, probably about January 15th or so. I attended this vision board event, which I didn't even want to go to, but my life coach said, hey, I'm going to this vision board event. You should go with me. Awesome. And I was like, my life coach is telling me I should do this. Maybe I should do it. Okay, so I attended, and the reason I didn't want to go is because I actually have this fear of meeting new people. Right. I'm a very shy person. So when she told me that, my fear was to, to meet some new people. And so I went ahead and went to that vision board event. Well, what happened at that vision board event was so much more than a vision board. I didn't even create a vision board, and neither did she. There were speakers speaking at the event. And listening to those speakers is what started to open my mind to hearing new possibilities. There was a gentleman there that spoke, and he has um, no arms, but he has pros not, not prosthetics, but he also has um, like hooks at the end for his hands. Yes. And he spoke, and his story was so incredible that listening to him, I was like, wow, if he can do what he's doing, wow. maybe there's something more for me. And then the keynote speaker got up to speak. His name is a gentleman you know, Greg Reed. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. So Greg Reed got up to speak, and he talked about possibilities. He talked about stickability. He talked about so many different topics that as I was listening to him, I was just soaking in all this information about life and what there is for us out there that I didn't even know about. And so when he got done speaking, he had invited people to attend his event, which is called Secret Knock. Yes. Well, the price tag for Secret Knock was very high. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, I'd love to attend, but I can't afford it. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. And my life coach, she looked at me and she said, Linda, you have to go to that event. 
She's a like, wonderful life coach. <laughs> I know, I know. But, but I was like, no way. I can't afford that. Like, that's a lot of money. I'm not going to spend that much money. And she goes, you have to go. She goes, I think I might be able to get you a discounted ticket. And I said, it's still expensive. Even discounted, it was still really expensive. But I said, okay, I'm going to put it on my credit card and I'm going to go. Oh, wonderful. She went and I went. And that was the start to something big. That was the connection that I needed to say, I belong with these huge life changing people, these game changers. They're, you know, in attendance are, you know, founders of huge organizations, like the founder of the Make a Wish Foundation, you know, attends this event. And I ended up becoming a good friend of his. But then I also met like the creator of the, or the inventor of the credit card strip on the back of credit cards became wow. a good friend of mine. And then I ended up meeting all these people. So I actually like to liken my story to the Wizard of Oz where Dorothy had to meet a whole bunch of different characters to get home. And I realized that my home is here, what I'm doing right now. I'm on this interview talking about fear and how we can break through fears. Indeed. So that one connection, that one connection of Secret Knock, attending Secret Knock, led to all these different connections, which led me two and a half, three years later to the red carpet. Wow, incredible. And yeah. you've written an amazing book, you know, uh, where you document your journey. Talk to us very briefly about that. Then we jump straight into, you know, how to break through those barriers of fear. Yes, yes. Okay, so, um, so the book, it's the seven lessons learned, the seven lessons that I learned to help you save time and money. Because during that year that I was facing all these fears, even though I was facing fears, which was awesome, I still didn't have a plan, a direction. I had no idea where I was going. I knew that I wanted to be so much bigger. I knew that I wanted to share the valuable lessons that I had learned throughout my years of being scared. I knew that I wanted to do so much more, but I didn't know what path to take. So in the book, I share about you know some of the, the lessons I learned, which was like the biggest one for me. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is the biggest lesson I learned was to budget. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> because budgeting for me was scary and I realized why yeah. budgeting was scary for me because it meant that I had to be hold strict and stricken to something like I had to stick to a budget to be successful and and it was so important for me to learn that because I didn't want to budget I didn't want to look at the numbers because if I looked at the numbers it could mean that I was failing that was the biggest thing for me so you know I also talk about you know meeting people and you know putting yourself out there in in positions that you are meeting amazing people because those amazing people could be the connection that next connection that helps you to get to where you want to go and so that's really the, the year of fears is it really it changed my life okay. I would not be on this podcast right now if I hadn't gone through the year of fears I would not have been on that red carpet if it hadn't been for the year of fears and I want to share with you really quickly like by being on that red carpet what I learned from that so this is literally three weeks ago you know that I was on the red carpet so first of all the power of asking because I one day it hit me I was like you know what I think I want to be on the red carpet so I'll just ask can I be on the red carpet <laughs> so silly right <laughs> and they said, yes. I asked and they said, yes. Wow. <laughs> That's all it was. And so I was on that red carpet. Now, here's the cool thing that happened after that. Yes. So I got, to the, I got to the red carpet, set up, we're doing the interviews, which was amazing. But after I left, I had this feeling and it was this feeling of something I'd never experienced before. And that was that, you know what? Now I expect to be on the red carpet. Beautiful. <laughs> It was crazy. And so I told the organizer, thank you so much for allowing me to experience this and be on the red carpet. But you know what? Now I expect it. And he goes, <laughs> cool, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, this is wonderful. So our life changes. Once we, once we break through fears, your total, your life changes because you have a totally different perspective. Indeed. So with every fear I break through, I have a different perspective. And my perspective is of ex expectation the expectation that I'm going to live a bigger and better life, the expectation that I'm going to do so much more, the expectation that I'm going to be so much more, no longer wanting to speak on stages with 10 and 15 people. No, now I want to speak on stages with 20 and 30,000 people. 
Beautiful. because I know I can reach more people and hopefully I'll give them that thought process that is like, I need to break through my fears too because that's what I want. Outstanding. Outstanding. Where can people find this particular book before we, we tackle that uh, process of getting over fear? Where can they get the book? They can find the book at livinglive.tv slash Y-O-F, which is Year of Fears, Amazon. Beautiful. So it's livinglive.tv slash Y-O-F, Amazon. Awesome, awesome. And we will put the link as well be below this video, so you can just click that and you're taken straight to it. Now let's talk about the process of overcoming these fears. What did you do? What was going on in your mind? <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, it's interesting you ask that question because – during the year of fears, I didn't have a process because I had been too scared all my life to, to do things that were fearful. So I didn't even have a process, you know? So literally what I did that year is I said, what scares me, whatever popped into my head first was the thing I faced that day. And I just did it because I was committed to breaking through fear every year, every day. So that was that year. But then I had to, you know, along the journey, I had to discover how can I do this on a regular basis without waking up and saying, what scares me? You know, <laughs> how can I recognize when I'm entering a fearful situation? So what I discovered is the very first thing that you need to do is you need to recognize that you have a fear. But how do you recognize that you have a fear? Well, my throat is tightening up. My heart is beating like crazy. My stomach is turning. My hands are shaking. My feet are shaking. My eye is twitching. You know, what is it? There could be one or all of those symptoms, if you want to call them symptoms, yes. you know, that you're experiencing a potentially fearful situation. Well, as human beings, our first reaction is to fight or flight. Right. And most of the time when we encounter a fearful situation, we want to get the heck out of there. You know, we want to flight. So how do you then recognize that it is a fear and then take that next step? Well, first, once you recognize that it's a fear, and I'm going to share with you quickly a story of something that I was experiencing a fearful situation, but I didn't recognize that it was fear. So um, one day, some of my friends decided they're going to do a bikini contest. Yes. <laughs> and they're all saying, hey, we're going to do this bikini contest. Do you want to do it? And I go, no, nah, I'm not interested. Yes. I'm not interested. So then the next week they said, hey, we're doing that bikini contest. We're getting ready to sign up. Do you want to do it? I go, no, no, that's not something for me. That's not for me. So the next week they asked me again, do you want to do the bikini contest? And I said, why do I keep saying no? Why? Do I keep saying no? Of course I'm not interested, but why am I not interested? Why is that not for me? Why are those the words I chose? And I realized that, oh my God, it's because I'm scared. I'm scared to get on the stage in a bikini and be judged by people. Because I know I'm going to be judged by people. I'm, you can't tell here, but I'm, I'm pretty overweight. All my weight is down in the lower, lower basement, you know? Yes. <laughs> so you can't tell that I'm like, I'm pretty overweight right now. And so the fear was like, wow, I'm going to be judged. And then I said, ah, I'm scared. That's why I'm saying no. I'm going to do it because I'm scared. Wow. And am I still scared? Yes. <laughs> 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 but I'm going to do it. And as I walk onto that stage, am I going to be scared? Yes. I'm going to do it because I'm scared. So when you change your mindset to I'm doing something because I'm scared, it puts you in a whole new world of possibilities, of endless possibilities. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. You do it anyway. And, and here's the thing. I realize that I've actually won the bikini contest already <laughs> because I'm doing it because I'm scared. I love that, you know, you've trained your way of thinking that way. Uh, and I think when business owners begin to think like that in dealing with situations in their, you know, in whatever it is, there is more positive results coming in because your mind frame or mindset is geared for success. Exactly. And like I said, I've already won, right? 
I've already won the contest. So now I'm not, I'm not as scared. I'm not scared about a competition because I've already won the competition. So now the fear I'm going to have to break through when I'm there is taking off my robe, standing there, walking on that stage, doing whatever posing I'm supposed to do. I have no idea what I'm doing, you know, yeah. and then walking off the stage, putting my robe on and then running to my car and getting the hell out of there. Like I'm out. <laughs> I'm not even going to stick around and cheer on my friends. Like I'm out of there, you know, so it's, it's crazy. But like you said, it is, it has been training my brain to think about fear in a different way to to realize that the reason I'm fearful is because there's some there's something that I'm fearful of, right? And I have to discover what is it. Is yeah. it the fear of success? Is it the fear of judgment? Is it the fear of failure? Is it the fear of of looking making myself look bad? Is what are the fears that that we have? Yes. So discovering what the fear is and then realizing that how many times have you been scared to do something? You have done it anyway. And then it was a lot better than you worked it out to be in your head. Yes, indeed. You mentioned something yeah, very. Imagine. Yes, you mentioned something very important, which you know I hear it quite a lot, and I think it's it's worth focusing on. You made a commitment right at the beginning that you were going to follow through, do it anyway, even if it's scary. How did you get to that point of making that commitment and following through? Oh, that's a great question because I, which that's a very interesting question because I'm a, I'm a lot like my dad in that my dad never finished any projects. Right. My mom, my mom finished every single project my dad had ever started. <laughs> and I'm a lot like that. Well, I was a lot like that. I should say, you know, reframing. I, I used to be a lot like that. And about, I think it was probably 2013, I decided that for a year, I'm going to do something. In 2014, for a year, I was going to do something. Just like every single day, I was going to do something. I didn't know what it, I don't remember what they were because they weren't as impactful in my life as facing a fear every day was. So in 2015, it was like, okay, 2013, I did this. 2014, I did that. What am I going to do in 2015? And so that's what it was. It just happened to be fear. And I do, I've learned that because I have, you know, that, that dad gene that's like quitting and giving up on so many things yeah. that I need to be committed to something. And so I'm able to, to force myself to be committed yeah. to something, you know, for one year. <laughs> like I commit for one year. Incredible. Absolutely. It's hard. It's hard. It's, it is not easy at all. But, but I just remain commit, committed. You know, what future do you want for yourself? Yeah. And you decide and then you tackle something that's going to happen. Maybe it's only a week. I'm going to tackle it for a week. Yeah. You know, but put the time frame on it and do it. Incredible. Incredible. As we come toward the end of our time here together, uh, Linda, where can people find you or connect with you should they want to progress, you know, learning from you on many subjects because you teach other subjects as well. Yeah. Well, I, um, I have a website, livinglive.tv. But then I'm also on Facebook. I'm big on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, but I don't really get it. I don't understand why, like what you do there. But I'm on Instagram too. And my Facebook and Instagram are livinglive.tv. Yeah. And what I'd like to offer is a free gift today. Um, you know, one of the things you mentioned in, in the introduction is that I've done over 2,300 Facebook Live videos. There's actually a story behind that. And I don't know if we have time for that, um, but I could tell you the story later. And the story behind that and the reason why I'm doing all those videos is an amazing story. And, and it really was one of the things that helped me start breaking through a lot of my fears as well. But because I've done so many videos, I realized that, you know, I want to help other people do videos. I've helped over 350 people do their very first Facebook live video. I helped over 55 people so far um, step on the stage for the very first time and speak in front of an audience, just helping people break through their fears. So what I'd like to offer your audience is a free video content planner. And the biggest fear that people have for doing live videos is they don't know what to talk about. What am I going to talk about? What am I going to say? So this video content planner is going to help you through all that is going to help you find the topics that you want to talk about when you go on a video. And so to get that, you go to livinglive.tv slash VCP, which is video content planner. So it's livinglive.tv slash VCP. 
Absolutely. And check it out, you know, use it and, and start doing those videos. And I was sharing with you earlier that um, by 2019, they project that 85% of marketing will be done by live video. So you better start now. <laughs> start now. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we never like to finish without asking our audience, our guests like yourself, to talk about maybe one thing that you wish you knew when you were starting your journey that has made a huge impact uh, maybe in your business or in your life. Maybe share that with our audience or give some tips around that. The biggest thing, and this is actually just you know, the lesson I learned just recently, was to ask. And like we hear that all the time, you know, ask and you shall receive. Uh, we hear to ask, but a lot of times people, like when, when I grew up, I was taught not to ask. And so I was scared to ask. So that one big lesson right there is, you know, starting my journey. If I had learned how to ask without feeling guilt, because I felt I used to feel guilt when I would ask for help or whatever. But it's, it's not only asking for help, but asking for what you want. You know, what do you want? What do you want? Who do you want to help in your business? Well, find those people and go ask them for help. Like, what is it that you want me to deliver to you? You know, or just just asking. The power of asking. It has, oh man. You know, just to be on your podcast. I actually asked, can I be on your podcast? <laughs> I would not have done that four months ago. Wow. wow. And just the power of asking is what got me on the red carpet. Incredible. Linda, you are such an incredible person. You accomplished <laughs> so much in a very short space of time as well. You know, the amount of people you're helping out, you know, over 300 people do things and over 55 people getting on the speaking arena. Incredible mm -hmm. contribution to the business world. We really appreciate what you're doing. And we want to Thank wish you. success and more great moments in life uh, as you continue doing that. In fact, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Any okay. chance you can come back on the show sometime soon? <laughs> sure. I'd love to. I'd be honored. Incredible. As you can tell, I like to talk about these topics because <laughs> they literally changed my life. I mean, I used to... I would go to networking events and I would sit in the back of the room and I used to be scared when they would come around and ask people your name. I didn't even want to say my name in public because what if I, what if I didn't say it right? <laughs> what if I didn't say my own name right? You know, and now I, I walk into a room and I'm sitting in front and I'm speaking on stage and, and doing all these things. It's because of the, this process I've gone through in just short, you know, three short years, as you, you know, pointed out. It's really a short period of time. It is and love to talk about it and help if I can help people do the same kind of thing by breaking through their fears man I'm in I am in incredible well we certainly love to have you here in the UK you know help business owners here and see what we can do together again thank you so much for that thank you I love it thanks for having me you're welcome now if you got uh, any questions please click the link below Linda may be able to respond to those questions uh, or you'll be, be taken straight to her website and will be answering some of your questions or just uh, you know access the content that you, you know, we're grateful have received from Linda here and that information will help you uh, certainly and once again thank you so much for joining us and in case you need any virtual assistant help uh, you know where to find us just click the link below and you get access to the virtual assistant. With that said, have a great day, everyone, and want to wish you a successful business adventure. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Ukai Business Show. We will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts. Want more? Check out www.ukaibusinessshow.com. Get your free trial of our virtual assistant service today. Just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Quote WOS18 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com.